This is your tropical weather update for Monday, July 11th. A weak tropical wave is producing widespread shower and thunderstorm activity just to the east of the Windward Islands, and the latest outlook from the National Hurricane Center gives this feature about a 10% chance of tropical cyclone formation within the next two days, and the eastern Pacific is quiet. A couple other noteworthy features on the charts today is a tropical wave over the Bay of Campeche, another tropical wave that is now passed just to the west of Jamaica. There's the one that's already been outlined in the tropical weather outlook. And there's nothing else in the central or eastern Atlantic, but do notice how the monsoon trough or intertropical convergence zone is extending a bit more toward the north now near the coast of Africa. Satellite imagery confirms that some of the strongest convection in the basin is located in the western Caribbean and Gulf of Honduras, as you can see by the latest enhanced infrared imagery. But this tropical wave is interacting with an upper level low, and upper level conditions are not favorable for development in this region. You will also notice the tropical wave that was highlighted in the outlook is located right here just to, to the east of the South American coast. And convection has been on the rise during the overnight hours, but it's diminished a bit over the last six hours. And as you can see on visible, it's not the most organized feature just yet. It's still partially embedded within the intertropical convergence zone. And the outlook for this system is that it probably won't develop. As we saw here in the water vapor imagery, there is still a strong trough draped across much of the central Atlantic into the greater Antilles. And just to the south of this feature is a lot of dry air and a lot of wind shear. Upper level conditions are generally favorable where the wave is currently located between 50 and 60 degrees west longitude. But as this system continues to move west, it should begin to encounter some stronger westerly winds aloft. And the upper level shear forecast do not call for this to change much in the next 72 hours. So the outlook for this wave is that it probably won't develop into anything. This is just another view of the tropical wave in the central Atlantic. Also notice that there's nothing immediately following the storm. And if we look at the eastern Atlantic, there's really not much coming off the African coast. But if we do look at the water vapor imagery, you can get a sense as to how much moisture is exiting the coast of Africa and how the intertropical convergence zone is not being suppressed as far to the south over here near the Cape Verde Islands. So things are gradually beginning to lift north. It's still going to uh, fluctuate between north and south quite a lot until we get into August, but this is a positive sign that conditions could be becoming a bit more favorable for tropical development right off the coast of Africa. If we take a quick look at the eastern Pacific, we see that there is nothing to the west of Mexico. And the same can also be said for areas just to the south. There's a lot of widespread disorganized convection, but nothing is organizing at this time. All this convection is embedded within the intertropical convergence zone that is elongated from west to east. Now in terms of this morning's model guidance, we'll start off with the 0Z Canadian. And this is the 48 hour sea level pressure forecast. And as you can see, the Canadian quickly develops a weak tropical cyclone just to the south of Mexico. I do not foresee this happening because one, there's no organizing feature down there at the moment. Two, the Canadian has the tendency to overdevelop tropical systems. And finally, number three, none of the other models are showing any type of development in the Eastern Pacific within the first three to four days. And also, if we fast forward this a little bit more toward the day six period, you begin to see that the model is also developing a weak area of low pressure near the coast of Georgia and South Carolina. And we can see what the model was showing a little bit better on the vorticity. And as I loop this, you can kind of make out the idea that the low is developing along a stalled frontal boundary. And the CMC is trying to form a very weak tropical depression, or at the very least, a strong area of low pressure right along the coast. But this is still about six days out, and I would like to see more model agreement before we become too interested with this potential feature. Now, this is the day seven GFS sea level pressure forecast. And you can see that the model is not as aggressive with the potential low off the east coast as the Canadian was, but it is lowering the pressures here quite a bit compared to the overall sea level pressure here with the subtropical ridge just to the north. It's still keeping surface pressures below average along the Central American coast as well, but it's not indicating any tropical cyclone development. And also notice by day seven, there's a fairly potent tropical wave now just to the west of 40 degrees west longitude. In fact, I'll go ahead and loop this again for you that so that you can see the tropical wave exits the coast of Africa right around this time and then it steadily, steadily marches its way westward. No signs of development yet, but that's your first good sign of a tropical wave in the models in quite some time. This is the GFS 7 day 850 millibar vorticity analysis and you can see all three features here. There's the tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa. We also have 
an increase in vorticity along the Central American coast. And also, here's the same feature that the Canadian model was indicating. It's just not quite as strong with it. And all three of these features will be monitored. And also, it's not just one tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa, if you were to believe the GFS. It's got the tropical wave here at 40 degrees west by day 7, but also there's another high amplitude wave near the Cape Verde Islands by this point. So, as always, toward the middle and latter half of July, we start to look more into the deep tropics to see if there's anything coming down the pipe. And uh, sure enough, we have at least two tropical waves that the GFS is picking up in the medium range. All that being said, the 0Z version of the ECMWF does not show much of anything throughout the short and medium range period. So the tropics continue to be gener generally quiet on this Monday, but there are signs that we could have a couple features to watch in the medium range as indicated by the CMC and GFS. So keep it tuned here to 28storms.com for more daily video analysis.